In the last class, we started discussing about noise and uh, uh, here is a quick summary of what we learned uh, in the last class. Uh, so, every resistor in thermal equilibrium with surroundings at an absolute temperature T is associated a noise voltage source in series with it and the noise voltage spectral density corresponding to this noise source is 4 KTR volt square per hertz. Uh, and as we discussed the last time around, the spectral density is independent of frequency. In other words, this is often what is called white noise and uh, the reason is simply the following. I mean, uh, optically, if you have all colors, the, uh, the resulting uh, color is actually appears white to us, right. So, and colors in optics are basically because of the light of uh, different frequencies. So, in a similar vein, if you have noise uh, corresponding to all frequencies in equal strengths, you know, uh, it's uh, it's called uh, it's called white. Obviously, if uh, the noise spectral density is not uniform with frequency, then uh, it stands to reason that this is called colored noise. Okay, so then we saw that if you have a noise source with a noise spectral density given by S V of f, and uh, it is processed by uh, a transfer function h of f, uh, the output noise spectral density is simply the input noise spectral density multiplied by the squared magnitude of the transfer function, all right. Uh, and the total noise is simply the integral of the noise spectral density and the output which happens to be Is that clear people, all right. And uh, we did our first calculation of this noise spectral density assuming we have a first order RC network. Let us assume that uh, we have this is an input and uh, An RC network. The output uh, consists of V in filtered by the first order RC uh, transfer function. It also consists of noise whose uh, spectral uh, uh, SVO of F is nothing but 4 KTR by 1 plus 4 pi square F square R square C square and uh, and the mean square value of the noise as we calculated the last time was what was it k t over c right where k is Boltzmann's constant. And uh, we also saw the intuition behind this uh, uh, apparently surprising result that even though uh, the noise source itself depends on the resistance, uh, the total integrated noise uh, uh, apparently is independent of the resistance. And uh, we reconcile that uh, by uh, recognizing that while it is true that the noise spectral density increases with resistance, the bandwidth uh, um, of the transfer function from the noise source to the output also experiences a change in the opposite direction. And in this case, it just so happens that uh, the two of them simply cancel, right. So, the total uh, the mean square noise is, uh, is kt over. See now, what are the uh, uh, you know apart from just being a mere curiosity, it turns out that uh, this result has uh, 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 quite some importance in practice. And here is an example where this plays a role. Uh, as we were mentioning, as we were talking about in the early part of the semester, we like to um, process signals di uh, digitally which basically means that you take a signal, you, uh, you sample it and you quantize it so that you have a digital representation of the input. And uh, uh, you know one way of doing this is to basically sample the input that you want to digitize and then 
once you sampled it, you kind of look at that sample and then quantize it, right? So, quantization obviously takes some time. So, you need some place to store that input sampled value and uh, storage of uh, something can only be done on elements that can, that have memory, right? And uh, so, it is either uh, an inductor or a capacitor, right? And for reasons of size, it is often a, it is often a capacitance, right? And uh, so, for example, here is uh, the most simple minded example one can think of. So, this is a switch, right, uh, which is periodically operated. Let us call this uh, signal phi of t. So, for instance, this is an example phi of t. This is the sampling period. Yes, when the switch, uh, when phi of t is high, the switch is closed. When phi of t is low, the switch is open. And uh, therefore, when the switch is closed, what happens to the voltage across the capacitor? Well, when phi is high, the capacitor uh, directly comes across the voltage source and therefore, it tracks the input voltage, right. When the uh, switch is open, well, whatever charge is there on the capacitor is trapped and therefore, uh, what comment can we make about the sampling instant? At what instant are we actually looking at the, uh, the input voltage? I cannot hear you. Yeah, so what is the a precise instant of sampling? It is the falling edge of uh, phi of t, right? So, this is the, the sampling. All right. Of course, life is not as simple as this. In reality, there is a whole bunch of non idealities. The, uh, the first one being that no switches is ideal, uh, and it turns out uh, that every switch will have associated with it a resistance. All right. And uh, so, therefore, uh, the bottom line is that uh, uh, well, the uh, the output will track the input, but you know there will be a small delay corresponding to the RC time constant, right. But more importantly, the resistance also adds, the resistor is also associated with a noise source, correct. So, during the tracking phase, how does the circuit look like? Well, there is the input. All right, and uh, so what comment uh, can you make about the voltage across C? I mean, and uh, by the way, the RC time constant. What comment can we make about the RC time constant in relationship with T S? Pardon? I mean that RC time constant must be extremely small compared to half T s because you want the input to track, I mean the voltage across the capacitor to track the input as closely as possible. So, R c is much, much, much smaller than T s, all right. And uh, so, uh, therefore, during the tracking phase, what comment can you make about the vo total voltage across C? It will of course, consist of V in, right, okay. And uh, remember at the sampling instant, namely the uh, falling edge of the, uh, uh, of uh, this waveform phi of t, uh, you not only have the input plus you have a component due to the, the thermal noise of the, of the switch, right. And what will be the, uh, so what comment can you make about the signal is basically V in, whatever it is, okay. Uh, what about the noise? Yes, what comment can we make about the noise? It is 0 mean, that is correct. What else? 
it's a random waveform that's correct okay it's got zero mean and it's got some mean square value and what is the mean square value kt by c right all right please understand that uh, when we say the mean square noise is kt by c it does not mean that you know you add square root of kt by c to the output right it just means that if you build a million such uh, circuits or if you look at the uh, the noise associated with the voltage across the capacitance a thousand or a million times right you will find that the mean square value of that noise is is kt by c it does not mean that at every instant of time the uh, every time you measure it it is square root kt also is this clear right so so what comment can you make about and uh, so this is what the voltage uh, across uh, the capacitor would be during the track phase right and then the hold phase comes when the hold phase comes what happens the switch is opened suddenly right so whatever voltage is there on the capacitor that voltage is i mean that charge is trapped right it has got nowhere to go so what you are actually sampling is v in plus the sample voltage across the capacitor is nothing but v in plus some noise voltage where the mean square value of the noise voltage is simply kt over all right for example let's assume that the rms value of the input signal that needs to be digitized is 1 volt all right and uh, c is uh, 10 picofarad all right so what comment can we make about uh, square root of kt over c please somebody do the math and tell me Twenty. So, all right. So, uh, okay. Now, if C was instead of being ten picofarad was uh, hundred femtofarads, what will happen? Uh, uh, to this value this is how much times uh, how many times smaller times square root of this is 10 power minus 13 and that is 10 power minus 11 so that is basically a uh, factor of 10 was that is uh, now it is 200 micro volts ok. So, what comment can you make about this uh, uh, in the last instance what comment can you make about the signal to noise ratio which is simply the ra ratio of the mean square value of the signal to the mean square value of the noise. which is and uh, is often expressed in db because this is power it is 10 log which is 20 log twenty log to the base 10 1 volt divided by 
200 micro volts and that is how much? Is 7040. All right. Okay. And uh, so, in other words, uh, this is only a factor of uh, less than. Uh, it's about uh, three, between 3000 and 4000, right? So, 74 dB is between 3060 dB. I mean, 1060 dB. Uh, uh, you know, 10,000 is 80 dB, 70 is somewhere between 60 and, and 80 and therefore, it is somewhere between is geometric mean of uh, 1000 and 10,000 is roughly around 3500 or so. Hmm? So, basically you are say, I mean the, uh, the practical importance of this is that if you use a small capacitor to sample, all right, you will be stuck with a noise voltage on the capacitor, right, which is large, okay. In this case, for instance, uh, uh, you know, uh, you already made an error of the order of 1 part in 4000, right. So, if you are, if the resolution of your uh, A to D con converter that you are trying to realize uh, is much higher, then this is a very bad choice of capacitor to use, right. So, if you are trying to resolve a voltage to better than say uh, one part in a million, right? Uh, one part in a million is uh, uh, is uh, uh, is 120 dB, right? Okay, and uh, if you do that, then this is you know grossly inadequate uh, because the moment you sample the signal, already you committed a crime, right? Which you cannot recover from, all right? Because you are adding some random thermal noise, I mean some random voltage uh, in addition to the voltage you wanted to sample that uh, is um, what do you call uh, um, dependent on that capacitor value. Is this clear? So, what is the moral of the story? If you want to resolve or if you want to build uh, a sampler or consequently an analog to digital converter with with higher and higher resolution, right, based on sampling the voltage on a switch uh, using a, you know, on a capacitor using a switch, then you see that the value of that sampling capacitor better be sufficiently large so that the error you make when you sample the input voltage onto that capacitor is way smaller than what you are trying to resolve, right, okay. So, uh, 